Hello there, this is KL7L and uh, we're just doing a bit of work in, pre in preparation to going on holiday uh, in a couple of months time and I'd like to be able to operate uh, my uh, QRP Labs uh, U3S transceiver on 475 kilohertz at 630 meters from Hawaii. Um, the problem is I've got to be a bit careful because the place I'm staying at doesn't like antennas showing so I've got to be a bit crafty so I've devised a uh, an antenna which I can probably just see the wire here this is like 28 gauge enamel copper and it goes out of the uh, out of the shack here and this is where you lose it up to an insulator and then all the way up to the tree well wow. so that's about a 50 foot vertical Actually, maybe 40 foot. Let's make sure it's not touching uh, the. Uh, oh, make sure it's not touching any vegetation. And uh, so, to uh, to tune the uh, that very short bit of wire, which is uh, highly uh, reactive, we have a, a tuning unit, and it's a faithful old uh, L match. So here's the antenna system, very short in terms of uh, wavelength and uh, we have a variable capacitor which is uh, this one here and uh, we have series uh, type 2 iron toroids um, and the reason that we got multiple of them is I can't add enough turns to get up to the required uh, amount of uh, inductance which is around about 630 micro -handers to resonate it up on this rig, it's quite a fair bit of uh, loading. So we have, I don't know if you can see in there, but we have quite a few toroids in series. And then uh, we tune it uh, with the variable capacitor. We've only got one of these uh, sections actually connected at the moment, so it's probably about a hundred puff or so. And then we fine tune the inductance here using this 20 amp switch. And we tap the last the toroid down, and this is about a uh, 50 to 60 micro Henry uh, toroid, and we tap it every 10 micro uh, Henrys or so. And we've got another 30 micro Henry here, which we can uh, add if, uh, if we need to, if the antenna is a bit short. So we can play around with the ratios here between the capacitance and the uh, the inductance. And what you find is because the antenna is very short, the cues are very, very high, the ratio between the inductance to the capacitance is very important, i.e. you have to get the right amount of conductance to the right amount of capacitance. So if you reduce this inductance, you change that, which will give you uh, an equivalent impedance on the output side. But there's really only one point to get 50 ohms, one to one match, where you get the actual right values of C and L and uh, otherwise it's a really uh, quite steep either side so it's a bit fiddly and so we have uh, hence why we've got this switch here and we can talk it out so it's just a it's just a normal L match uh, typically if you see the capacitor on the antenna side you know that this is actually the high impedance side and if it was a, a low impedance antenna the capacitor would be on this side and we go out to 50 ohms so at the moment we're transmitting uh, on uh, 475 into a dummy load which is uh, this here which is this 20 dB's attenuator and it's going into uh, my spectrum analyzer and uh, we're actually reading the power at the moment so it's uh, plus 10.17 dBm uh, so you add another 20 dBs and so that uh, becomes 30.17 dBm which is just over a watt of RF coming out of uh, this uh, device at the moment. Um, the, all the electronics and logic run off 5 volts so then 3.3 uh, so there's regulators in there and I've got another regulator from 12 volts coming in from the, the wall plug here so 12 volts coming into the back of it and that puts nine and then it's regulated and there's nine volts on the output uh, transfects on this 
um, and uh, that produces about a watt. So a watt of RF typically going into the, the cider here and then uh, matching uh, the uh, very high impedance of this wire uh, by adding inductance capacitive. So we added a lot of inductance to bring it up to resonance and to 50 ohms. And we're hoping that A, with a one watt output power from, from the, uh, the transmitter here, that uh, this uh, capacitor won't actually arc over. There's probably a few hundred volts, even with, uh, with one watt of RF coming out of here, because the impedance is so high, probably, you know, quite a few kilo ohms of, uh, of uh, inductive reactants, if you like, and uh, capacitive reactants and the rest of it. Um, the tune that out, that the, uh, the voltage across the capacitor here is probably, you know, pretty high. I'm not going to push it, but uh, there we go. So this is going to be the uh, the tuner, nice and simple. Um, you know, you see these big variometers and things, these air, big air wound uh, capacitors, and uh, ones like this. There's one over here, for instance, which is a big, uh, big variometer. The problem is I've got to get that in a suitcase, and also if I put my hand near it or whatever, the uh, the field lines around the coil are quite go out a fair old way with the. Uh, as it is, so it would actually affect the tuning. The nice thing about toroids is most of the field is uh, enclosed very close to the uh, the toroid itself. So if I can put my hand here, and actually it doesn't affect the tuning very much at all, even though the wire, the transmit wire, which I'm not going to touch, is uh, just there. Anyway, so L match, nice and simple, short wire, very high Q. And uh, I wonder if we can actually show this. Yeah, probably can. So here I have an MFJ, uh, what is this? Yeah, MFJ uh, meter. And I've modified it so it uh, covers uh, 137 kilohertz, uh, 2200 uh, meter band, or 500 kilohertz. That's you know, around about the 475 kilohertz. What I'm going to do is uh, turn the transmitter off. Like that. I'm going to uh, plug the, uh, the coax in here uh, from the ATU. The tuning in it, the coupler we want to call it. And the other side I'm going to put uh, into the meter here. So out of the uh, out of the meter, it's on the 50 ohm side, in through here, through here, and out through the wire. So what we're going to do is show you the uh, how tight the matching is. I'll put this close to each other. All right. So the meter's set for 475.8 kilo uh, megahertz, and the VSWR is 1.2 to 1, which is rather good, isn't it? And uh, if I move the tuning capacitor, you want to see how tight this is. Yeah, that's pretty tight. You see the VSWR? going down to 1.1 and the the impedance sitting about 45 ohms. So if I change the ratio here, um, which I'll do, watch what happens when I do that. There goes the meter and I can bring it back down again but you'll notice it's not as not a good match. In fact this is about 40 ohms. If I put it back to the next one One to one, and uh, just over 40, 40 ohms. So it's quite touched. Now, if I touch the wire with my hand, you want to see what happens. Yeah, see. <laughs> so the environmental, this thing uh, uh, will go crazy if it uh, hits a leaf or a tree. So you have to keep it uh, well insulated. So the the Q of this uh, tuning unit is very very high. Um, so the efficiency of this short width of wire. It's probably less than, uh, I don't know, 0.1 or 2 percent. So if I put out one watt out of the uh, the transmitter here through the tuning unit, and then uh, there's a watt going in probably, if I'm lucky enough, going up there, um, it's actually radiating EIRP just a couple of milliwatts, and it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how far we get. Anyway. 73s from Alaska, KL7L.